Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you Python basics by teaching you how to write rock, paper, scissors in Python. It's going to be really fun. So let's get into it. The first step to coding in Python is getting access to Python. Now you can download it onto your local machine, but I've actually found it a lot less friction and way easier to just use something like deepnote.com to have online notebooks where you can already have Python installed and that way it's no friction, no problem for you. So that's where I'll start is by going to deepnote.com, setting up for an account and then creating a new project. That'll open a new notebook that already has Python installed and it's ready to roll for your coding. The first thing you'll notice is that there's already something here. You start with a hashtag. Hashtag is equal to a comment inside of Python. This means it's written language for humans. Computers don't read this. Before we actually get into any coding, let's first map out how to play rock, paper, scissors, just using pseudocode. Pseudocode basically means we're going to humanly write down what the steps of the code might be using comments. So first, we need to get the user's choice of rock, papers, and scissors. Then we need to get the computer's choice of rock, papers, and scissors, correct? Once those two things are decided, then we can go into the logic of the game. And that'll be if the user played rock and the computer played paper, who wins? The last thing is to send a message about who won and what the result is. And that is our pseudocode for this game. Now, the first part of our pseudocode is to do the user's choice. In order to get the user's choice, we're going to give the user the option, okay? So in order to do that, we're going to use a function called input. This is built into Python natively, and the input allows a message to be sent to the user and returns the user a chance to use their keyboard and will save that value. So for instance, input rock, paper, or scissors. And we'll put a question mark right here, a space, and then we'll go ahead and hit enter. You'll notice that down here, it runs rock, papers, and scissors, and then gives the user the option to type something in. You can type in rock and hit enter, and that value will be returned, okay? We don't want to return the value. To return a value basically means the computer just output it. We want it to be saved. We want it to be saved as a variable. In order to create a variable, you just set something equal to what you just did. So use the equal sign and create whatever name of a variable you would like. In this particular case, I'm going to make it called user underscore choice. You cannot have spaces in your variable names, and so you can use underscores. So in this particular case, I'm going to have user choice be representative of whatever the user inputs in this little text box right here. And they can type in bananas if they want. And then if we were to go down here and type in user underscore choice, I'm using shift enter to run this, by the way. You can also run it by clicking right here. It'll print out bananas, and that's because the user choice is now represented by bananas. So we've successfully saved the user's choice as the variable user choice. Now let's go ahead and create the computer choice. I'll store that in a variable called computer underscore choice. And now what am I going to set it equal to? Well, we'll come back to this here in a minute, but let's go ahead and just set it to a default because you know we can't read a computer's mind, but let's just go ahead and assume every time the computer plays, the computer will choose the variable rock, okay? So it's just going to be set up to always choose rock. So see how I put rock inside of those single quotes? Python has different data types, and this particular one is called a string. A string is basically just characters or text, and it's in comparison to things like numbers, right? And so if we actually use the built-in Python function type, open parenthesis, we can pass in any sort of thing in here, and it'll tell us what the data type is. So I can type in, for instance, the user choice, right? Since we typed it in, it's a character. And if I hit shift enter, run it, you'll see it returns str, that stands for string, and basically that's just a text or character field versus if I type in, for instance, type of one, right? This is just a, the number one. It'll say that it's an int, which stands for integer, which means a numeric value with no decimals. If I type in 1.567, this now becomes a float, which is basically a numerical value with decimals. So that's a quick introduction to Python data types very quickly. Now we're going to be moving to the logic of the actual game. If you've never played rock, paper, scissors, it's a pretty simple game. Basically, you choose rock, paper, scissors, and someone else chooses rock, paper, scissors. And there's a set logic of who wins in certain situations. So here are the options, okay? That you play rock, and the computer also plays rock, okay? That is one option. What happens if you play rock and they play paper, okay? Here's another option. You play rock and they play scissors, okay? If, that, if this was to occur, this would be a tie, okay? If rock and paper were to be, that would be a win for paper, so that's a lose for us, okay? Then we're going to play rock and they play scissors, that's a win for us, all right? 
Let's keep moving on to this section. I'm just doing more pseudocode, a little bit more detailed. What happens if I put paper? Well, if they put rock, then we win, right? Because paper beats rock, so we're gonna call that a win. What if we play paper and they play paper? That's going to be a tie, okay? And what happens if we play paper and they play scissors? Well, in that case, we lose, okay? And then lastly, what happens if we play the scissors, okay? And they play rock, that would be a lose for us. If we play scissors and they play paper, that is a win for us. And if they play scissors, if we play scissors and they also play scissors, that would be a tie. And so this type of logic is actually going to be built using an if statement in Python. You know, if this, then that. We have lots of different ifs, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and create those in Python using if statements and elif statements. So if we want to have an if statement, we just start off by using the word if, okay? And then we have this word if, we're going to be comparing two things, okay? So if the user choice, okay, if we played rock, and you do that by typing double equal signs, that means is this equal? Double equal signs means is this equal? So if user choice is equal to rock, okay? And we're gonna put that into parentheses just to put another extra thing here. Use the and sign and the computer choice, okay? The computer choice is equal to, in this case, rock, right? Then what happens? You're gonna put a colon at the end to show that you're done with that particular if statement. Hit enter, that'll auto indent. So basically indent means four spaces or whatever, right? A tab and it'll auto indent and this is your then. You don't have to type in then, it's already implied. So if I played rock and computer chose rock, then it's a tie. And so we're gonna print that out. So we're gonna use the print statement, which basically sends a message to a human and say, it'll say, it is a tie, okay? And so we can actually already pretty much play this game um, in one particular case. So if we go ahead and hit the run button up here, hit run, it's going to run through all of this code. It's going to ask us at the bottom what we wanna play. And if we choose to play rock, so type in rock, and we know that the computer is going to choose rock, right? Because that's automatic right there in line five. So type in rock, hit enter. It'll print out, it's a tie. Okay, great. So we know that we've already hit this if statement. It was true, then print this. So we'll just continue doing this for the rest of the logic. It'll take us a little bit to complete, but it'll be well worth it in the end. Now, maybe instead of printing it as a tie on all of the ties, what we could do right here is create a tie message. So this is going to be the variable that contains it is a tie, exclamation mark. And instead of printing out the actual string right here, I can print out the variable that represents it, okay? So moving on to the next one, we're going to go ahead and move what happens if I, the user, so user choice equals, in this case, I'm still playing rock, okay? But this time the computer has chosen another one. Now, of course, this situation hasn't happened quite yet, but we'll get to it later. So computer choice is equal to paper, okay? Then we're going to print what? Well, looks like we need to print, we need to go right underneath it, print, and it's going to be a loss. So let's create a loss message, okay? So we'll call it a loss message, and we'll set it equal to, you lost. Okay, and we'll go ahead and pass that in to the print statement right here. One thing does change here though. So if this is true, then print this. But what if it's not? It can go ahead and continue on to this one if we call this an L if. And L if stands for else if. So if this is true, then do this. If not, check if this is true. If it is true, then do this. And we'll keep doing that throughout the page. So let's go ahead and copy this and move it down here, where we'll be saying, okay, I'm a rock and the computer is a scissor. So type in scissor here. And what happens? Well, we need a win message. So we'll type in win message and say, you won. Okay, go ahead and type in that, uh, copy that win message, paste it down here, and now we'll keep moving on. So copy this, move it down here. In this case, it is a paper, and a rock, and in that case, we win, so we'll leave the win message. Copy this, move it down, 
Okay, in this case, I played paper and the computer chose rock. Oh, the computer chose paper, sorry about that. And in that case, it's a tie, so we'll put in the tie message. See how much easier this is now that we have that pseudocode? Okay, keep going. So we have paper and a scissors. And in that case, it's a loss, right? So we'll put in the, uh, the loss, oops, double select, loss message. Okay, next we have the scissors and the rock. So we'll type in scissors right here, scissors. And in this case, it's a rock and it's a loss. So we'll leave the loss message, copy it, paste it back down. In this case, scissors and paper and it's a win. So we'll use the win message. So type in win message. And then lastly, this is the last one of scissors, scissors, and it's a tie, okay? So let's go ahead and put tie message, all right? And then lastly, who won? Well, we're actually indicating all throughout here. So we can actually probably delete this part of the pseudocode because we're already doing it. So that's great. Now there's one big issue with our game and that is that the computer choice is always going to be rock. And so none of these other choices will, none of this will be true, none of these if statements will be true unless the computer choice is equal to rock. So we won't be printing anything else. So what we're going to go ahead and do right now is type in an else statement at the bottom, okay? An else statement at the bottom is basically going to say, if all of this is false, then do this. And then say print, there was an error in the game, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift enter to run that cell and I'm gonna try playing. I'm going to choose rock. The computer is also going to be choosing rock. So I already know the outcome is either an error or a tie. Hit enter and it was a tie. Great, let's run it again. I'll go up here, press this arrow. That'll go ahead and run it. It'll have me choose. I will choose paper, okay? So I know that I either win or it's an error. Hit shift enter. Let's see what we get. Oh, hit regular enter, there we go. And I won. Okay, so this is fun, but not really, because I always know what the computer is going to play. So we want to make that different. We want to make it random, right? And so instead of having the computer's choice always be rock, what I'm going to do is actually create options for the computer to choose from. I'm going to do that by creating a list. And a list is just square brackets, okay? Square brackets, and you can pass in whatever you want inside of that list. I want it to have three options inside of that list. I want it to be rock, Notice that I'm making them strings, so they're in single quotes, paper, okay, or the scissors. And they're also comma separated. So that list will now have three options, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and call it uh, options list. Set it equal to that. And so now we've created this new list, okay? And instead of the computer choice being just the rock, what I'm going to do is import a library. And we're not gonna get into this too much detail, but Python has extra add-ons basically that are called libraries or packages that enhance the ability of Python. This particular package that I want to add on is actually called random and it's going to help me make a random choice. So in order to get that added on to Python, what I'm going to do is use the import command. The import command basically says add this on. So and on the random package, okay? Now that that will be added on, I can go ahead and instead of having a rock be the computer choice every time, I can use the function random, inside of random dot choice. And what that's going to do is make a random choice from a list. So I'll open parentheses to pass in a value. I'm going to pass in my options list. So instead of being just rock, it's going to choose either rock, paper, or scissors randomly every time we play the game. And with that, we should pretty much be ready to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the run button right here to run this cell. I'm gonna scroll down to where it's asking me, rock, papers, or scissors. I'm gonna type in rock. I'm gonna hit enter and it ran. Let's see what happened. It says I lost. Well, that's not very fun because I can't see what I even put and what the computer put. And so maybe we need to add one little section right here and just have it be like a reporting section, okay? So pseudocode report, and I'm gonna say print, uh, I chose, okay? And then I'm going to pass in the value of what I chose. And so that is going to be user choice, okay? So if I have user choice right here, it'll print out I chose user choice if we add this plus right here. So it's going to take user choice and add it to the end of this sentence or the string and say what I chose, okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing for what the computer chose computer 
chose, and then also pass in the plus sign, which is going to add to that string. And then what did the computer choose? Well, it's of course the computer choice, because that's what we substituted here and that's what is represented as. So I chose, computer chose, and then maybe we'll also just add a print here that will basically be a bunch of dashes to just make it look a little bit easier and have some space between if I won or lost. Go ahead and hit the run button, scroll down. Uh, what are we feeling? Maybe paper right now? Hit enter. So let's see what happened. Ready? I chose paper, computer chose rock. So I won. Woohoo! But we're not quite done because what happens if I play again and I type in apple? Okay? What happens then? Okay, there was an error in the game. But maybe we'll give them a little bit more clear of a direction here. Check to see if you spelt the words correctly and had the proper uh, casing, okay? Just in case like someone types in, like for instance, let's go back and let's just type in paper lowercase, it's gonna be an error. So that way we're gonna tell people what to do if there is a mistake, okay? That way they can play again. Honestly, how cool is this? That I've made a game in Python in like less than 20 minutes where I can choose paper, the computer chose paper, and it's a tie. I could be playing this for days, to be honest. All right, paper again. I lost, oh my gosh, what the heck. So there you have it. There's a little introduction to Python by programming rock, paper, scissors. How fun was that? Not too bad, right? If you have any questions about it, let me know down in the comments down below. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by pressing the like button, and it would mean a lot to me if you hit subscribe. I'll try to make more videos like this in the future. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers, so if you could help me in that journey, I'd appreciate it. All right, bye everyone.